Oh no, guys, I'm over there. And welcome back to some more the Flutter 9 Steppos. And we're on event 15, I think, uh, called Grave News. Sir Walter Bolvent takes Hanny at his word. But fear Scudder's findings may have been a little off track. Um, that doesn't sound too good. Uh, Grav Nevs. Uh, 13th of June, so, okay, so 15th of June, all the shit will go down. We have limited time. Oh, what a nice dinner. Oh, wait, no, that's not dinner. It's like ham. <laughs> ham and champagne and uh, bread. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I could go for some bread and champagne and stupid ham right now. I'm like hungry all the time. I'm not fat. I'm just hungry. Fast metabolism, yo. Sir Walter evaded, evaded me in the dining room. The sight of him so respectable and established and secure, the embodiment of law and government and all the conventions, took me aback and made me feel an interloper. He couldn't know the truth about me, or he wouldn't treat me like this. I simply could not accept his hospitality on false pretenses. There's a hospital host... No, wait, never mind. I'm more obliged to you than I can say, but I'm bound to make things clear. I'm an innocent man, but I'm wanted by the police. I've got to tell you this, and I won't be surprised if you kick me out. That's all right. Don't let that interfere with your appetite. We can talk about these things after dinner. What a sweet, sweet man. It may be almost hysterical to be sitting there waiting for on by a footman and a sleek butler, and remember that I had been living for three weeks like a brigand with every man's hand against me. Now you can get a sense of how the poor man leaves Mr. Hanny. Then we went to his study for coffee. I made up my mind that if I ever got rid of this business and had a house of my own, I would create just such a room. Then, when we, when the coffee cups were cleared away and we had got our cigars alight, he bade me get started with my yawn. Right, let's tell him the story of my life. I've obeyed Harry's instructions, and the bribe he offered me was that you would tell me something to wake me up. I'm ready, Mr. Hannay. I noticed with a start that he called me by my proper name, Harry. Oh wait, I didn't I didn't click anything. Uh, all right, Sir Harry. Let's see. I describe a meeting with Sir Harry. Uh, yeah, and the speeches at hall. At that he laughed <laughs> uproariously. Yeah, so that's okay. I thought he, that was uh, Mr. Harry. The old man in the Moreland house solemnized him again. I had to describe every detail of his yep, the appearance appearance. The road man. My day as Roman excited him a bit. He made me describe two fellows in the car very closely, closely, and seemed to be raking back in his memory. He grew merry again when he heard of the fate of that ass, <laughs> Jopley. Stupid ass! The murderer. Then I got to the murderer, and he grew solemn again. He heard al all about the milkman and my time in Galloway, and my deciphering scattered snows at the inn. He drew a breath when I whipped a little book from my pocket. Right, how it began. I told of my boredom in London, and the night I had come back to find Scudder gibbering in on my doorstep. I told them all Scudder had told me about Carolides and the Foreign Office conferences, and that made him purse his lips and grin. Right, we're done here. You have heard my story. Now, what is your response? You may dismiss the police from your mind. You're in no danger from the law of this land. Great Scott. Have they got the murderer? No. But for the last fortnight, they've dropped you from the list of possibles. Why? Principally because I received a letter from Scudder. I knew something of the man, and he did several jobs for me. He was half crank, half genius, but he was wholly honest. Trouble about him was his partiality for playing a lone hand. That made him pretty well useless in any secret service. A pity, for he had uncommon gifts. I think he was the bravest man in the world, for he was always shivering with fright. 
and yet nothing would choke him off. I had a letter from him on the 31st of May. But he had been dead a week by then. The letter was written and posted on the 23rd. He evidently did not anticipate an immediate decease. His communications usually took a week to reach me, for they were sent undercover to Spain and then to Newcastle. He had a mania, you know, for concealing his tracks. He got up and crossed the room to our cabinet, bringing back Scottish letter. Alright, so what did this letter say? Let's see, I can't read. Wait. <coughs> Sir Walter, I am in the gra gravest danger. My worst fears have been re re, re oh, fuck, fuck your handwriting <laughs> being realized my enemies are here in London they have made themselves known I cannot write down more in the uh, in case the, these words be intercepted but I have found shelter with a good friend who lives near Portland Place God willing you will hear from me before the 15th June your servant Franklin P. Scudder and that was all, I suppose? Yes. Yeah, okay. I think his object was to clear you if anything happened. But when I got it, I went to Scotland Yard, went over the details of the inquest, and concluded that you were the friend. We made inquiries about you, Mr. Hannay, and found you were respectable. I thought I knew the motives for your disappearance. Not only the police, the other one, too. And when I got Harry's scrawl, I guessed at the rest. I've been expecting you any time this past week. Thank heavens. I've been expecting you. You can imagine what a load it took off my mind. I felt a free man now, once more. let us have the little notebook. <sighs> Don't give it to him. No. It took us a good hour to work through it. His face was very grey before he had finished, and he sat silent for a while. Oh, it's a fishy. I don't know what to make of it. He's right about one thing. What is going to happen the day after tomorrow? How the devil can it have got known? That is ugly enough in itself. But all this about war and the Black Stone, it reads like some wild melodrama. If only I had more confidence in Scudder's judgment. The trouble about him was that he was too romantic. He had the artistic temperament and wanted a story to be better than God meant it to be. He had a lot of odd biases, too. Jews, for example, made him see red. Jews and the high finance. The black stone. The Schwarzer Stein. Yeah, it's like a penny novelette. And all this stuff about Carolides. That is the weak part of the tale, for I happen to know that the virtuous Carolides is likely to outlast us both. There's no state in Europe that wants him gone. Besides, he's just been playing up to Berlin and Vienna and giving my chief some uneasy moments. Now... Scudder's gone off the track there. Frankly, Hannay, I don't believe that part of his story. There's some nasty business afoot, and he found out too much and lost his life over it. But I'm ready to take my oath that it's ordinary spy work. A certain great European power makes a hobby of her spy system, and her methods are not too particular. Since she pays by piecework, her blackguards are not likely to stick at a murder or two. They want our naval dispositions for their collection at the Marienamt. But they'll be pigeonholed. Nothing more. Oh, somebody's calling. Who can it be? There's a trunk call from London, Sir Walter. It's Mr. Reef, and he wants to speak to you personally. Who the fuck is Mr. Eath? Oh, my host went off to the telephone. He returned in five minutes with a whitish face. Oh my god, no. Don't give me any bad news. I apologize to the shade of Scudder. Carolides was shot dead this evening at a few minutes after seven. 
Herodotus, no! Oh my god, what? Oh my god, what to take down this stupid organization called the Blackstone? Oh my god, well, okay, I'm gonna end this episode right here. You'll find out more in the next episode, next event. And I want to thank you guys for watching. Gracias por ver. Should find these demon dudes and until next time. Hasta luego.